Hello, my name is Peter Bricks. I'm a debtor bankruptcy attorney in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about loan modifications before bankruptcy, during your bankruptcy case, in the middle of your bankruptcy case, and after your bankruptcy case. Um, I just want to read you this quick disclaimer before we get started. We are a debt relief agency proudly assisting consumers in filing bankruptcy. However, there is no attorney-client relationship with the viewer of this message unless there is a fee agreement. Your situation is unique to you and we would need to consult you individually before we could offer you applicable and accurate legal advice. This information should be used only for educational purposes. Uh, very common question um, I get is how does the loan modification impact, uh, impact my bankruptcy? Um, of course, this is a big question because most people are in bankruptcy because of uh, their situation with the mortgage. Uh, the first thing is, let's look at it from the Chapter 7 perspective, um, a loan modification before you file bankruptcy. So you got a $1,500 monthly payment, $250,000 owed on your mortgage, the bank reduces it to $900 a month, but you still owe $250,000. Okay, and now you you get a modification theoretically it's a temporary modification for three months it then becomes permanent and you still want to file chapter seven bankruptcy okay do you it does your modification survive the bankruptcy okay first question is do you reaffirm uh... do you reaffirm it and if you reaffirm it in the bankruptcy it certainly does that's what a reaffirmation is but you very well might not want to reaffirm if you don't reaffirm then you're in a situation, and the reason you might not want to reaffirm is we just said the balance is two hundred fifty thousand. What if the house is only worth two hundred thousand? So that monthly payment might be low, but you're in a negative position with your equity. What you what you might want to strongly consider is not reaffirming and uh, continuing to pay on the mortgage. If you continue to pay at that modified rate, the bank is most likely going to accept your payments and uh, you're in a kind of informal modification. They're essentially honoring the modification that was reached prior to bankruptcy, but it technically gets discharged in the bankruptcy. Therefore, even though you, now you're in that negative equity hole on your, in, in your uh, house, that negative e equity uh, is wiped away in the bankruptcy because you technically discharged the mortgage. But you, you should be able to continue to pay at that new modified rate. Now let's talk about a modification in the middle of a bankruptcy case. Um, a modification in the middle of the bankruptcy case, um, now d is that being signed in the context of a reaffirmation agreement? A reaffirmation agreement has to be filed with the court. So maybe the bank's modifying it and you are signing a reaffirmation agreement that your attorney is signing and that the judge is ultimately ordering. If that's the case, that certainly survives a bankruptcy. That's what reaffirmations do. They essentially survive the debt through the bankruptcy. Now, what if it's kind of an informal modification? There's been no reaffirmation signed with the bankruptcy court, but the bank has agreed to let you pay a lower rate. That is not a reaffirmation. Therefore, the loan is discharged in bankruptcy. Now, essentially, you have an agreement with the bank uh, where, the, where they're accepting your payments. You're paying at this lower rate in the bank but there is no official note it's not showing on your credit report the bank cannot sue you for a deficiency you discharged the note in bankruptcy even though you quote modified it that is um, a situation where the bank will probably honor the modification so you kind of almost in a way get the best of both worlds you discharge the debt and you have a new note now let's take the situation where you've approached the bank about modifying after your discharge in chapter seven once you discharge your a debt in Chapter 7, it is discharged. Code Section 11 U.S.C. 524, that debt is discharged. You can't come back in and, and, and let it be uh, and essentially reaffirm the debt after the discharge. That is not allowed. So the bank might approach you or you might approach a bank about a modification and there might be paperwork signed. Look carefully at that paperwork. A lot of times that uh, that paperwork is going to happen in a lot of places, most likely. This is not an attempt to collect debt. It does not affect your discharge. We're just modifying the uh, lien rights. That That's what you're doing. You're modifying the lien rights. The debt was still discharged in bankruptcy. It cannot be uh, brought back into play. The, the only time you could essentially bring it back into play um, is if it wasn't a modification of your existing mortgage, but you 
refinanced your house after bankruptcy because the refinance is a new note. It was not part of your Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Um, so now let's look at it in the Chapter 13 context. Chapter 13 context, you wouldn't be modifying a house you're surrendering. So we're talking about a Chapter 13 debtor who's keeping their home. They probably went into Chapter 13 because they had mortgage arrears. You, you're, you don't, in that scenario where you make it to the end of your Chapter 13 discharge, you don't surrender your home. That debt is not, that debt is not discharged. So almost think of it like a, a reaffirmed mortgage in a Chapter 7. Therefore, these modifications will be binding. You will have your, your new. Uh, rate, uh, contract rate, and that will survive the discharge of your Chapter 13. Um, and that covers uh, loan modifications in Chapter 7, Chapter 13 bankruptcy.